welcome to the stage the executive director of the North Carolina Faith and Freedom Coalition, Mr. Jason Williams. I've got the honor of introducing our next speaker. And you may be wondering, what does 2024 have to do with this guy? Uh, I, I'll just leave that up to your imagination. But, but we've heard last night, we've heard today, there's been a theme, constant theme, about how we need a fighter. And if we have ever had a fighter in North Carolina, it's this next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, our final speaker, the keynote speaker, he's somebody, he, he's, he's not really, you know, made any formal announcements about any other plans, and he's just trying to do his own thing. And I've also got to go on record that we're an organization that we, we don't endorse candidates. You know, so we don't do that. We just, we just educate people. So I can't tell you who I would support in a gubernatorial race. <laughs> but we're gonna have some good options. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna to introduce to you our keynote speaker, my good friend, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. It's on now. All right, guys. All right, very first thing we're going to do is always, hey, I got 25 minutes. All right. They're very generous this time. Uh, uh, very first thing we're going to do is always, we're going to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the reason why we're ble uh, blessed and living this blessed and prosperous land. So we give him thanks first and foremost. And, and, and here's the thing. He's the one we're really working for. And living for. Because what really matters is not what you do down here so much. Uh, it, it, it matters what you leave behind. And it matters where you go when you leave here. Because I can tell you this. Making that decision to spend eternity in heaven is important. Because I want you to think of eternity like this. The first day of eternity is the first day of eternity for all eternity. <laughs> ain't no marking time in hell. You ain't gonna be able to mark no wall and say, I, I got 30 days left. The first day will be the first day for all eternity. And so it is important for us to get it right down here. And it's important for us to remember that God is the one that blessed us. And we need to return that blessing by continuing to work hard to make sure that his will is done in our lives and in the lives of our nation and in the lives of the people of this nation because he's the reason why this nation is so blessed. So we give him thanks first and foremost. So, so here it is. We, we uh, in this nation, we, we're facing problems. Huge problems. Start at that 10,000 foot level and look over the nation and you look down there at a place at, we call our southern border. The southern border is wide open. Across that sort southern border, you have uh, gangs pouring over. You have drug traffickers pouring over. You have human traffickers pouring over. And don't put it past the realm of possibility. Some of them may already be here. We could have terrorists pouring over that southern border, bringing God knows what with God knows what intention. Then you come on back in our communities and look at what's going on our, in our communities. You have criminals running wild. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Running wild like wild animals in the streets. Don't even use the public toilets anymore. The sidewalks are public toilets. The gutters are repositories for dope needles. The stores are open for business for anybody who wants to steal something that's less than $900 worth. And human life doesn't mean anything to some of these criminals. 
They'll gun you down or run you down for a little next to nothing. We just had an incident where a 41-year-old man ran over an 18-year-old boy, and I was so disgusted when I heard two things. The first thing I was disgusted by was the fact that this man only got $50,000 worth of bail. Now, when that young boy in Kenosha had to defend his life against some thugs and a child molester, they threw $2 million on him. But now this 41-year-old man runs over an 18-year-old boy. There's $50,000 and you can go home. But I was even more disgusted by what this 41-year-old man who killed this 18-year-old boy said. He said, in argument against his bail, I have a life. I have a job. I have a home. I have things that I need to take care of. You see where the lack of law and order has led us to in this nation? If law and order was in place when that man ran over that 18-year-old boy and stood in front of that magistrate, he should have been shaking in his shoes because he should have known the words that he would have heard were going to be, you will be remanded until your trial for murder. But law and order has been thrown out the door. You take a look at what's going on with our economy. Our economy is in a shambles. Inflation is through the roof. Gas prices are through the roof. Your 401k is looking real bad right now. So is mine. We are not on firm footing. And why? Why are we not on firm footing? Why have people lost trust in our government? Why have people lost trust in our medical profession? You know, the medical profession that we used to consider to be one of the rocks of this nation, people have lost faith in it. When they tell you that you have to take an unproven, untested shot in order to keep your job, when your doctor is threatened because he is trying to treat you with drugs that he knows will work, when we have a person at the helm of a place like the CDC who is proven to be untrustworthy. The people no longer have faith in our elections anymore. Our democratic process. And Lord, will somebody please go to Washington, D.C. and tell the Democrats in Washington, D.C. that we do not live in a democracy. I get so tired of hearing, we need to make our democracy safe. We live in a constitutional republic. And in that constitutional republic, the underpinning of that constitutional republic is something called our democratic process, which is your ability to be able to vote for the representatives who will represent you in the republic of the United States of America, in this republic. And that is being undermined by those who do not play fair. That is the foundation of our republic, is our democratic process, i.e. voting. And people have no confidence in it whatsoever. The greatest nation on earth, a nation where people have figured out how to get a hair comb to you from California to your home in North Carolina, for on, you ordered it on Thursday morning. It's at your house on Thursday evening. They figured out how to do this. To go into a giant warehouse, pull out one single hair comb, put it in a box, and have it delivered to you in less than 12 hours. They figured out how to do that. But we cannot figure out how to have secure and fair elections. I do not buy that. I don't buy it for one second. All of these things exist right now in our country. And you look out across, you look out of our country. Look over at what's going on in the Ukraine. And think about what's going on in the Ukraine. The suffering that exists in Ukraine right now and why it exists. Look at what's going on in Iran right now. You know, Iran is trying to build a nuclear missile. Iran is not going to hold on to a nuclear missile if they get it. 
They've already made it plain that they want Israel wiped off the map. And to get Israel wiped off the map, guess who have, they have to get rid of first? You look at China. China not only has been ripping us off economically for years, but China has had their eyes on the American prize for many decades. And the money that they've gained by ripping us off financially, where do you think most of it is going? Going directly to their military. And see, that military is not over there right now worried about pronouns. Their military is, is, is awake, but it ain't woke. They're not worried about anything but one thing. How do we beat the Americans? They're eyeing Taiwan, and they're just, they're just eyeing it, waiting. So now why are all these things going on? Why are they going on? I can tell you why they're going on. It's one simple answer. Weak leadership. Bad policy. Now, I'm not shy about saying it. It's all coming from one. Hold on a second. Let me change that. It's not all coming from one party. It's not all coming from one party. It's not. Let's go on and be honest. It's not all coming from one party. We know the Democrats roll in, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you like this. There's a lot of so-called Republicans that say they love America that's not doing a darn thing for America. Or they're doing a whole lot for themselves. Their families are sitting pretty. I guarantee you, their 401k doesn't look anything like your 401k. These so-called Republicans, people call them rhinos. I like rhinoceroses. I think they're kind of nice looking animal. Strong and powerful and you know, I'd hate to get tangled up with one of them things. I don't know why in the world we would refer to a weak, jellyback, uh, whip, spineless politician as a rhino. You are no more a rhino than I am a condor. And I'm certainly not a condor. But that's why these things exist. They exist because of bad policy because of weak, ineffective leadership. Look at the leadership that we are facing in this country right now. Well, did I say leadership? <laughs> I said leadership, didn't I? Yeah, Joe Biden is not really leading anything right now. Joe Biden is hands down the worst president I have ever seen. He is the worst leader of anything that I've ever seen. In fact, it's safe to say that right now, I believe China is in charge of the United States of America. I'm not ashamed to say it. Some other entity is in charge of the United States of America because if you look at Mr. Joe Biden, the resident of the United States of America, some of y'all caught that. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. You don't see anything. It's a blank slate. And here it is. It's not because he's elderly. It's because Joe Biden is an ineffective, weak politician. And he always has been. He has not done anything different now than he did 47 years ago. He is the same as he always was. But he's not the only one. You can go down on both sides of the aisle and you can see the weakness the ineffectiveness, the cowardice, the inability to stand up for what's right, to in, the inability or unwillingness to stand up for the principles that made this nation great. And what happens when you put these people in charge that literally run the country into the ground? They have literally, this plane, this super jet that was flying at 45,000 feet on cruising altitude. We were on our way to a great place, a place that we had never been before in this country. They have literally taken the wheel of this plane, the yoke of this plane, and they are literally driving it into the ground. So what do they do when they drive it into the ground? What do they do when the bad policies come directly to your doorstep? 
When you're now paying five, six, seven dollars a gallon for gas, you're paying 10 times as much for food at the grocery store. You're, you're, you're struggling to figure out how to pay for medicine, food, your children's education. And on top of that, you're afraid of what's going to happen in the next six, eight months, the next year or so because of what's coming across the border. You're afraid for your children's lives on the street because law, the law is not being enforced. What do they do? They stand on the camera and point their fingers and blame those who told us what would happen when they were in charge. Those people who stood and told you, you don't want Joe Biden as your president. You will have a horrible, horrible economy. You will have an open border. You will have a disaster overseas. And now, that same administration, those same people are blaming all of you. Why? Because you believe in America. You believe that America should be great. You believe that you want to make America great again. They're telling you that you are responsible, that you're the ones that are a threat to our democracy. There we go with that again. They're telling us that you are a threat, that you hate the Constitution. People who have literally been willing to risk their lives for the protection of the Constitution are now being told that they hate the Constitution and are a danger to it. Do you see how depraved these people are? We know that's not the truth. We know who the real threat to our so-called democracy, our republic. We know who the threat to our republic actually is. The threat to our republic are groups like Antifa and BLM. When the cities were on fire across this nation two years ago, who was it that was burning those cities down? Who was it that was burning police cars? Who was it that was assaulting and murdering police officers? Who was it that held Seattle as captive with no consequence. There was not one MAGA hat to be found in all that. And if it was, it was on fire by some thug who hates this country. Who is it that has this border wide open and sits in stunned silence with their mouths open or sits back somewhere giggling like our vice president? What is wrong with that lady? Do we even have a vice president? Where is she? Can she find the basement? I told you know, she's one of these you told her to go to the basement. She's headed towards upstairs. Who's responsible for it? It is a direct result of the ineffective leadership of the uh, commander in chief of the United States of America. Our border was, was secure under Republican leadership under President Donald Trump. It was secure. And we were working towards securing it more every day. <laughs> now, because of this bad policy and weak leadership, it's all gone out the window. Then you take a look at your children's education. Woo! Is there media in here in the room? Media? W-R-E-L, are you in here? It's easy, it's easy to spot them, and if it's dark, you can sniff, and you can still spot them because they stink to high heaven. Who's, who's responsible for that pornography? in your children's library. Who's responsible for that? Did somebody wearing a MAGA hat go in and say, hey, I want to put pornography in your school? Did somebody in, in your school go there and a MAGA hat go down and say, hey, I want to uh, come in here and tell your children that they hate each other based on their color? It's the folks on that side of the aisle, you all are the ones who are standing up saying no. We don't want pornography in our schools. We don't want our children indoctrinated. We're against CRT. We're against telling our children that they should hate each other because of the color of our skin. But here it told us the exact opposite. The moms who went down to those, uh, moms and dads that went down to those school board meetings were literally labeled as terrorists. And we have yet to do the same. 
for a group called Antifa and Black Lives Matter who burned and bombed their way across America two summers ago, all captured on film. You see, the reason why I'm telling you this and the reason why I'm telling you about these lies that they tell is because of this. We're at something called salt and light put on by something called faith and freedom. And that links directly to the most essential element of our nation's founding. What is the most essential element of our nation's founding? It's not our Constitution. It's not our Declaration of Independence. And it's not even our founders themselves. The most essential element is the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ and his word. That is the most essential element. Now, I know good and well, some professor at UNC will hear this and probably bust out. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson was a deist and this is not a Christian nation. Same guy will tell you that a man can have a baby. So his opinion matters not to me because this is what I know. If you take our Constitution, you take our Declaration of Independence, you set them down and you set, our, you set the Holy Bible directly in between them. You open up those pages, you read that document called the Constitution. You read that document called the Declaration of the Independence and you read that Holy Word. These similarities are uncanny. Why? Because our founders found their strength and their wisdom from the pages of that word. When that constitution, when that declaration was being crafted, they did not say that those inalienable rights came from a king or a queen. They said it came from your creator. And your creator is God in heaven. And when they got stuck right in that constitution, Benjamin Franklin implored them to leave that hall, go across the street to a church and beseech the wisdom of God to continue their work. And they were able to do it because of that. I tell you that for this. We face all of these problems now. And not only do we face these problems, but we face other obstacles that seem to want to get in our way. We, we face an entire cadre of a political class that's bound and determined to tell you that you don't matter. Your voice doesn't matter. We had this uh, nitwit named AOC that once upon a time when she was first elected, yeah, I called her a nitwit. When I first got in this office, somebody told me, say, uh, you know, you're the lieutenant governor. You can't really be calling people dummies and idiots and nitwits. I searched the thesaurus for another word for idiot. I actually typed idiot into thesaurus and it came, the response was, there's no other word for idiot, idiot. Just use idiot. She's a nitwit. And these were her words. She said, all you people out there complaining can shut up because we're in charge now and you're just screaming from the cheap seats. You see, that is a person who doesn't understand the basics of civics. And we know that the poor child doesn't. Lord have mercy. She doesn't even know what civics is. If I told her you need to take a civics class, she'd probably say, I don't work on cars. I'm a Congress lady. She doesn't even understand that where she sits, the seat that she literally sits in was ordained by our God. Not for her to be a ruler that would be a terror to people, but to be a servant to the people so that they may rejoice while she is serving them. She doesn't understand that. And far too many of our political class are in the same boat. They think that we sent them to Raleigh or to Washington or wherever we sent them to get rich and get reelected. That's not why you're there. 
You are there to serve the people who went and pushed your name. Push that button beside your name. You're there to serve them. You're not there to be a king or queen. You are literally there to be what Jesus was to the people. A servant. A foot washer. Someone who is willing to sacrifice everything for them. And you all, what are you? Are you sitting in the cheap seat? Hollering? Absolutely not. You see, our founders were wise men. And they knew that beside that word of God, the, most, the second most essential element in securing this constitutional republic, this great experiment that we call America for all time, the second most essential element is you. Without you, this engine simply will not work. You are the fuel that drives freedom and guards freedom. I want you to think about this premise, and I've shared this before. Think about every war that we've ever fought, from our revolution to the Civil War, to the Spanish-American War, to, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, World War I, World War II, uh, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, the current wars that we had in Iraq and Afghanistan. I want you to think about all those wars, and I want you to think about who won. Who won those wars? Who won them? Did George Washington win the revolution? Did, did, did Grant, General Grant and General Sherman, did they win the Civil War? Did General Patton win World War II? No. No. The people who won those wars lie on the markers all across this globe, in graves all across this globe. They're the old men that you see in the grocery stores wearing the hats that say Korean veteran, World War II veteran, Vietnam veteran, Desert Storm veteran, Iraq veteran. They're that young man or that young woman who is missing a limb or missing an eye who have lost part of their minds who are willing to sacrifice all for this, this nation. The nameless the faceless, the people who left their homes and all their possessions, and many of them gave up all of their tomorrows to preserve our freedom. They are the ones that won the war. George Washington couldn't fire every bullet, nor could, nor could General Patton. It was the men and women who were willing to lay down their lives as a living sacrifice for this nation. They are the ones that won those wars. Today, we fight a different kind of war. We fight a war to restore our border, to restore our economy, to restore decency in our public schools, to restore election integrity, medical freedom, and a host of other things that we've got to restore in this country. And who are the soldiers that will get the work done? Certainly I am one who is in the spotlight and in the focus and that you have placed confidence in and I will do my part, but I know that you will do yours as well. You will be the heroes of this next war to save our republic. The last thing I will leave you with is this. I want you to make a solemn promise to yourself that you will not let this happen. I do not want you to let this happen, and I don't want it to happen either. I don't want to look at my future generations, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and have to tell them that I was not strong enough to fight to pass down the same freedoms to them that somebody fought and died to pass down to me. I don't want that to happen, and I'm sure you don't either. What we all want is for our children and our grandchildren to walk to a mantelpiece one day, or walk over to a photo album one day and flip it open and see a photograph of us and have someone ask, who is that? For that person to point and say, that is my grandfather. That's my great-grandfather. That is my father. That is my mother. And they fought to preserve my freedom. And that is the reason why I stand tall to fight for, fight for freedom, to pass on to those who will come after me. It is up to us to save America. We can't wait on anybody else. The person that sits in your chair is the responsible person. Take that responsibility serious. Let's stand up with faith. 
Let's move forward in freedom and let's save this nation for all time. God bless you all and God bless the great state of North Carolina. Thank you.